Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Don't Fry For Me Argentina, or How Homogenization Destroys Climate Science. People are raised to believe that homogenization and pasteurization are very pure things. Homogenization is the process of mixing the good stuff and the bad stuff together. In the case of milk, it's mixing the cream and the milk. You'll have to decide for yourself whether it's the cream or the milk that's the bad part, but in the case of climate data, it's really easy to figure that out. This is the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies webpage where you can browse their climate data. Now we're going to scroll down and look at stations around Buenos Aires, Argentina. Unlike North America, there's very little high-quality long-term data in South America. One of the few stations in South America with a good long-term record is at the Buenos Aires Observatory. Let's take a look at the data there. As you can see, there's been a lot of warming at the Buenos Aires Observatory, about 2.5 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at why that is. I'm going to copy the latitude and longitude here. Now I'm going to paste that location into Google Earth and see where it takes us. There we are zooming in on Buenos Aires. As you can see, that's a terrible location for thermometer, right in the middle of a massive urban heat island. Studies which have been done in other large urban heat islands, like New York and Washington, have shown more than 5 degrees warming as a result of the growth of the urban area. It's not at all unusual for weather forecasts in the Washington, D.C. area to end with in about 5 to 10 degrees cooler in outlying areas. There's only two other stations in the Buenos Aires area with long-term temperature records. One is at Mercedes, which has been active since 1909, and the other is at Rocha, which has been active since 1906. Let's look at the station at Mercedes first. The yellow line is the unadjusted date at Mercedes. You can see that it was just as warm there in the 1920s as it is now. In other words, there's been no warming there, a completely different story from what we saw at Buenos Aires. Now let's look on Google Earth to see where the Mercedes station is located. I'm going to paste the latitude and longitude again, and let's see where it takes us. Well, as you can see, that's an excellent location for a thermometer. It's in a rural area and is not affected by urban heat island effects. A totally different story from Buenos Aires, which was in the middle of a giant city and shows a huge amount of warming as a result. There's one more long-term station near Buenos Aires, and that's at Rocha. Let's see what's going on there. As you can see with the yellow line, Rocha, like Mercedes, has no long-term warming. Let's see where it's located on Google Earth. I'm pasting the latitude and longitude in, and now we're going to fly over to Rocha. Once again, we can see that the thermometer is at an excellent rural location. There's no urban heat island effect, and there's no warming there. So we have three long-term thermometers in the region of Buenos Aires. The one in the city shows a lot of warming, and the two rural locations show no warming. That should tell us that there's no actual warming in the Buenos Aires area. Now we're going to look how the homogenization of data by NASA affects the reported temperatures at those three stations. As we saw earlier, the yellow line is the unadjusted data at Buenos Aires Observatory. Now we're going to look at what the homogenized data looks like. That's the black line. You can see that the homogenized data shows less warming than the unadjusted data does, but it still shows a lot of warming, more than 1 degree Celsius. Now let's do the same exercise at the rural station of Mercedes. Remember that the yellow line, the unadjusted data, shows no warming over the last century, but the homogenized data shown in black shows a significant amount of warming. This is because they're averaging in temperatures from the urban heat island of Buenos Aires. 
Now let's do the same exercise at the third station in the Buenos Aires area. This is Rocha, where there's been little or no warming over the past century, as seen with the yellow line. But when we look at the homogenized data shown in black, we see a tremendous amount of warming. Once again, this is because they're averaging in temperatures from the urban heat island of Buenos Aires. Now let's summarize what we've seen. There's three long-term stations in the Buenos Aires area. One is the Buenos Aires Observatory right in the middle of a huge urban heat island. Second is at Mercedes, a very well-sited rural station. And the third one is at Rocha, which is also a well-sited rural station. The rural station at Rocha shows no warming. Same thing at the rural station of Mercedes. But at the massive urban heat island of Buenos Aires, they have a tremendous amount of warming over the last century. The rural stations in the area show no warming, but by averaging or homogenizing in temperatures from the urban heat island of Buenos Aires, they contaminate all of the thermometers in the surrounding area. It's bad enough that they use terrible thermometers like the one at Buenos Aires. But then they take the bad data from Buenos Aires and use it to contaminate the good stations in the surrounding area. Homogenization completely destroys the temperature record. The only correct way to handle this is to eliminate bad stations like Buenos Aires. If the data was handled properly, the conclusion would be that this area is not warming. But it's not being handled properly, as you can see with homogenized data. Now let's look at the consequences of what they're doing. This is a typical NOAA temperature map these days. It's all covered with red and makes it look like the Earth is burning up. But the reason it looks like it's burning up in South America is because their past data is contaminated by homogenization from Buenos Aires. Because of homogenization, the past is being cooled, which creates the imaginary appearance of warming. This red coloring in here is all fake. Of course, this isn't just a problem at Buenos Aires. It happens at cities all over the world. And urban heat island effects aren't just for large cities. Any place where there's asphalt, brick, air conditioning, heating, snow removal, you're going to have urban heat island effects. The people who create the global temperature records are being paid to produce warming. But their warming has to be plausibly deniable. So they create things like homogenization to make it look like what they're doing is legitimate. These graphs showing warming are at the core of modern climate science. But even more importantly, these graphs are at the core of the EPA's CO2 endangerment finding. And the EPA's CO2 endangerment finding forms the legal basis for the efforts to shut down the U.S. energy supply. This sort of madness needs to be stopped. There is no climate crisis. What there is a crisis of is bad science. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science, propaganda, and organized crime for a long time.